everyone, let's get serious. Growing up, we get used to doing a lot of things automatically, like tying our shoes, catching the subway, or grabbing coffee. We don't even think twice about it. Seriously, think about it. We do not mentally rehearse the step-by-step -step process of tying our shoes every time we do, or we don't stumble over our complex Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts coffee order. The same goes for how we handle our finances. Today, I want to share nine money habits that might be keeping you from financial freedom and tips on how to break out of them. I have spent the last decade of my life immersing myself in the field of finance through a degree in economics, an MBA in finance, and a career in finance on Wall Street. One of the most life-changing skills I have learned throughout that entire experience is how to handle my own finances, recognize bad money habits, and how to break free of them. How I use that to build a multi-million dollar net worth, and tips on how to break out of them. So let's start. Money habit number one, paying yourself last. I first heard of this concept in the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This is one of the main books that all the financial wizards have read, and I love it. I'm gonna let you know that you should read it as well. It's one of the blueprints for achieving financial freedom and was the first book that made me start thinking differently about money. I actually first read it as a teenager. However, it didn't really resonate with me because, I mean, I was a teenager. However, I always kept in the back of my head some of its key principles. Robert explains that the way people pay their bills can be broken down into two types. The first way is a poor people's habit, which is paying yourself last. As soon as your paycheck comes in, you pay your rent, you pay your phone bill, all your streaming services, and fund your social plans like going out to eat or the concerts. And then you save whatever is left over, if there is anything left to save. The second habit he talks about is the rich people's habit, which is the complete opposite of before. They pay themselves first, and that is what you want to do. Take a minimum of five to 10%, whatever you are comfortable with, and put that into your savings account the minute you get paid. This is so important because by doing this, you're guaranteeing that you're prioritizing your own financial growth over buying things. I like to tell people to treat themselves like they are a bill that they have to pay no matter what. Similar to your rent or your mortgage, you have to pay these or you'll be on the street. Put that money into your general savings, an emergency savings, your investment accounts, or a general goals account. No matter where you put it, it's going to increase either your net worth or your spending power by allowing you not to rely on debt to fund a future purchase or experience. While you can do this manually after you get paid, check to see if your employer allows for you to split your direct deposits into multiple accounts based on percentages or on a dollar amount. That way, it is automatic and you will not be tempted to skip a payment to paying yourself. If you cannot split your paycheck, no problem. There are some apps like Opportune or Robinhood where you can schedule automatic withdrawals to go into an investment account or a savings account. Once you set these automatic routines, you won't even notice the amount being taken out and you'll be surprised after a short time how much it has all added up to. Again, treat yourself like a bill. Your future self will be happy that you're not past due. Money habit number two, getting comfortable with bad debt. It seems that debt these days is actually the norm. People are using debt to buy the smallest of things like presents, clothes, and concert tickets. My rule is, unless I can afford to pay for something outright in cash, I shouldn't be buying it in any form of debt. Now, obviously this doesn't include real estate unless you have hundreds of thousands of dollars around. And if you do, let me know. I can help you invest it. All seriousness, remember, credit card companies want you to be bad with your finances because that's how they make their money. The average credit card interest rate is about 22%, which cancel out all kinds of benefits and rewards that these credit card companies provide if you're not paying with them in full every month. And it's okay to use your credit card to buy the things that you want. You don't pay interest if you pay it off in full every month. But if you know you might leave a balance on the card, I would suggest to maybe wait on that purchase. You might not even want or need what you was looking to buy. Debt has become so common that we hardly think twice about it. But living with debt should not be the norm. Avoid unnecessary loans whenever possible. This includes credit cards like Amex and Visa to new short-term loan companies like Klarna and Afterpay. When I was looking for a new car, I had the option with a practical model similar to mine, a Volkswagen Passat. However, I wanted a fast sports car and decided to go with the Infiniti Q50 Red Sport. It had 500 horsepower, it had a white interior, it had tinted windows. I mean, I really, I really enjoyed that car. 
Now you can imagine that the cost between the two was drastically different and I ended up paying about $400 more a month to drive the Infinity. Now honestly, sometimes I do wonder where I would be if I just purchased a Volkswagen, put the extra $400 into the market. Now don't get me wrong, I don't have any regrets driving that car. I really, really love that Infinity. But because debt and status are so normalized in our society, I didn't even think twice about signing away my future wealth. And to be honest, either car would have gotten me to the same location at the same time. But one just gave me an ego boost. The bottom line is, don't get into debt if you don't have to. Just pay for things in cash or at least minimize the amount of debt you have to get into. Don't do things if you can't afford them. Don't get into a car loan to buy a car if you do. Shop around for a good value to minimize the loan amount. Don't get a mortgage if you're still paying off student loans. It's literally, it's way too much. America is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, yet somehow it's considered okay to have loads and tons of debt these days. The status quo is to live with debt, but don't settle for the status quo. Do whatever you need to do to live debt free. Money habit number three, not saving enough for emergencies. It's essential to have a financial buffer. Paying yourself first helps you start putting away at least 10% of your income. Once you have a stockpile, you can start using the additional money you save to build your investment fund and look at investments. An emergency fund is crucial because life is unpredictable. Car repairs, there's medical expenses, or unexpected job loss that can happen at any time and to anyone. Without a financial cushion, these events can derail your financial stability. Aim to save at least three to six months worth of living expenses in an easily accessible account. This fund should be used strictly for emergencies and replenished as soon as possible if you need to dip into it. Don't carry the debit card associated with your emergency account as well. You don't want to be tempted to use your emergency funds for a non-emergency must-have outfit or a non-emergency meal or a non-emergency can't-miss concert. I know it sounds overbearing to say three to six months worth of expenses, but start small. Make a list of all your expenses and multiply each of them by three and then just focus on one line item. It could be just your rent, could be just your car note, or it could just be for meals. It could also be the least expensive or the most expensive or the most important thing to you. When you're done funding that one expense, move on to the next one and repeat. Breaking down large goals into smaller, more manageable goals will make the process less daunting. Money habit number four, not knowing your income or expenses properly. Until you know what your starting point is, how do you know where you want to be? There's something called lifestyle inflation, which means your spending will rise as your income rises. The more money you make, the more money you spend. Financially savvy people know their assets, their liabilities, and have clear financial goals. They know all the steps they need to take to get there, making them more likely to build wealth compared to people who fantasize about money but have no idea how to acquire or manage it. Just being mindful of your finances and seeing those numbers in black and white will trigger your action response. If your finances are scattered across various accounts and you don't know what you owe or what you own, it's literally it's time to get organized. Apps like Mint can help you track spending and your income, but you can also use a spreadsheet program like Microsoft Excel or Google Sheets to keep track of your monthly income and expenses. Consolidating accounts with financial institutions that offer multiple services can also simplify your life. It only takes a few minutes to set up and it's totally worth your time. If you put all of your accounts, your investments, savings, credit cards, and loans, you can track your net worth, which I personally believe is more important than knowing your credit score. I personally use the app Empower, which focuses on your net worth. I can see all of my accounts and see which ones are increasing and which ones are dragging down my finances. Having disorganized finances is another way of keeping your head in the sand. If you have credit cards open everywhere, student loans that you don't really know the balance of, and you're not sure what you're spending every month, then it's time to consolidate your finances. I check my app every month to see what accounts are decreasing and which accounts are increasing. Hopefully, the investment accounts are the ones that are rising the most. Another place that offers a full suite of services is Betterment, which offers a checking account, a high yield savings account, as well as different investment accounts for all your financial goals. With technology and these amazing new platforms, it's really not hard to get and stay organized with your finances. The key is to have the courage to look at where you stand financially. Ignorance is bliss, and I know it can be humbling and sombering for some people, but until you know your starting point, it's impossible to get to where you want to be. Give up the habit of staying confused about your finances and build a habit of staying organized and regularly looking at your numbers. Money habit number five, 
having expensive hobbies. Now, my vice is traveling. And if you're not new to this channel or my socials, you know I've been to over 70 countries. A lot of people like to shop or go to every concert or eat fancy meals. And while it's okay to have hobbies, if you want to improve your financial position, you can save more of your existing income or make more money. The idea combination, honestly, is a mixture of both. You can't build wealth if you're making more money but spending all of it. Likewise, focusing solely on saving does have a cap. You can't save 120% of your income. You really can't save 100% unless someone is fully funding your life. Using cashback sites will only get you but so far. To truly build wealth, you have to think of both sides of the equation, how to save a larger percentage of your income and how to make more money. And do not get discouraged that you will have to do this for the rest of your life. If you start early, those savings will compound and grow, and then you can slowly integrate more extras into your life. Find a happy compromise. Instead of a fancy dinner every week, cut back to maybe one or two. Have every streaming network cancel ones you don't really use that much. Travel to new countries every couple of months, cut back to maybe just one or two big trips a year. These cuts will truly add up to having more money invested or safe. Money habit number six, spending more due to poor planning. I used to end up buying sunblock every time I went on vacation or to the beach because I didn't check the weather to see how much sun the clouds were going to be out. Little expenses like these add up. Not planning in advance and being caught unprepared always end up costing you more money. This could be things like having to take an Uber instead of using your subway card. It could also be paying overdraft fees because you didn't check your account balance. Another way is putting things on credit card and just end up paying all those interest charges because you didn't set money aside for unexpected expenses. Banks make billions of dollars from overdraft fees. Now, to be honest, I'm all about YOLO and living spontaneously, but if you're always having to buy things you already have at home or just paying extra fees and interest because you're unprepared, then just take a few minutes to plan ahead. Check the weather before you leave the house. Leave buffer time in between appointments. Look at your account balances every so often. My personal bank sends me an email every morning with my balance and the app Opportune sends me a text message every morning with my account balance. Even just a little bit of planning will save you tons of money. And at the end of the day, having money in the bank is what allows you to really YOLO for what you want to do. Money habit number seven, overpaying on taxes. Outside of buying a house or a college degree, taxes are going to be the single biggest expense in your life. While everyone has to pay taxes, a lot of wealthy people have knowledge of legal corporate structures that come with tax advantages. One of the best ways to increase your wealth is by understanding tax laws, rules, and leveraging them in your favor. For example, Investing through an ISA or a Roth IRA, which shelters your dividend and profits from taxes or operating under a business structure can reduce your tax bill legally. Most of the tax loopholes are for the rich, for people who own assets and businesses. But there are a lot of tax loopholes available for the average person as well. For example, most people have a 401k through their employer and contributing to your 401k is a way to directly reduce your taxable income. The HSA is also another way to reduce your taxable income. Now, I'll talk more about ways to cut down on your tax bill in another video, so definitely check it out if you want to learn more. Money habit number eight, over relying on credit cards for rewards. Credit cards can offer great perks, not gonna lie, but they also lead to overspending. I used to justify unnecessary purchases by thinking about the reward points or miles I would earn. And to be honest, yeah, I've earned a lot of free hotel stays from using my credit cards. But now I use cash or debit for everyday expenses and only charge larger planned purchases on my credit card and then pay them off immediately. This way I earn rewards without falling into debt. For instance, instead of charging every coffee or small purchases on your credit cards, try using cash or your debit card. Save the credit card for larger expenses like travel or big purchases, but only if you can pay off the balance immediately. This discipline ensures your benefits with rewards without the risk of incurring high interest debt. The convenience of credit cards can sometimes make spending feel less real, but the bill at the end of the month can be a harsh wake up call. So the money habit to give up is to make sure you only put things on your rewards credit cards if you have the money to pay for it in cash and don't justify the purchase just because of the points in the miles. Money habit number nine, waiting too long to invest. When you start having savings and have built that financial buffer, it's time to start investing so your money works for you. Diversify your investments to weather different market conditions, but avoid leaving too much money in the bank. Most bank accounts offer 1% returns, 
but inflation is roughly 6%, which means your bank account loses about 5% of its buying power every year. So I have a mixture of safe and riskier investments that I'm willing to lose. Start looking at different investment strategies once you're saved enough. Don't leave any additional money in the bank account more than you need to. There's always going to be reasons why you can't invest. Either you have a lack of time, not enough money, or not knowing where to start. However, the longer you put off investing, the harder you'll have to work to achieve the same financial goals. Waiting to invest until you have money is a huge mistake. Start now, even if it's just a small amount. The sooner you begin, the more time your money has to grow. Investing early means you need to contribute less over time to reach the financial goals. It's really easy to get started investing if you just stick your money in some low cost index funds from Vanguard or Fidelity. I'll talk more about how to pick good index funds in another video. So if you want to learn more about that, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it. If the idea of saving and investing your money just isn't fun for you, then just try to reframe how you think about it. It's not about discipline and deprivation. It's about taking care of your future self. It's a form of self-care and self-care is fun because it makes you feel good and makes your life so much better. If you recognize yourself doing any of these money habits, just be gentle with yourself. Don't beat yourself up about it because most of us didn't learn this stuff in school and we didn't learn it from our parents. Most of us, people who have good money habits, usually just learn it the hard way by screwing up and wanting to do better. I'm definitely not perfect by any means. Even though I'm a YouTuber that talks about money, a lot of what I just talked about in this video is stuff that I needed to be reminded of as well. It's all about having the awareness and the financial literacy to notice whether your daily actions bring you closer to your financial goals or take you further from them. It's never too late to replace bad money habits with good money habits and to just improve your relationship with money. For more tips and inspiration, check out my channel. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Let's continue this journey to financial success together. Till next time, peace.